Happy Saturday, happy spring, happy Easter. Holy moly, there's a lot of things to be happy about. Yeah. Sun is shining here in Calgary. If you're not in Calgary, sure hope the sun is shining on you too. Uh, welcome to our first webinar of uh, the season. A um, couple of housekeeping rules. Uh, we've got a me PowerPoint happening simultaneously. I'm going to let Brandy explain. Yeah, so um, if you would like to see more of Colin, because he's got a lot of stuff on his table, uh, just make sure to tap or click on his camera. And then um, if you'd like to see the PowerPoint, because he's got a lot of cool notes on there, you can click or tap the PowerPoint. And you'll see what I mean as we get going. I'm going to share my screen here in a moment. And uh, then you can choose whichever view you want to see. And of course, everything will be available online at goldenacre.ca slash blog. I'll put the link in the chat below. And you can always check out the PowerPoint later if you'd rather just focus on Colin. So anybody who watched the webinar before, you can't know this, I mean, you. So uh, as I go, it's questions with comprehension, not explaining something properly. Stan, please interrupt us. Brandy will throw a flower or something at me. Yeah. Uh, but if it's a question, uh, specifically, you want to know something about your garden, there is a Q&A at the end. Uh, the final uh, 15 minutes, uh, we always open it up to Q&A. So don't feel... Said you don't need notes. Uh, feel free to follow along. A um, couple of things I want to mention. First, the big, beautiful elephant in the was behind me, including one of my favorites, Creeping Jenny. Uh, I've always liked this, and my wife's name is Jenny, so now I double. Uh, these aren't yet for sale. This is a sneak peek. Um, well, we're ramping up for the season. It is still too early in Calgary um, to put your annuals out. Um, but I thought everybody could use a burst of color. Actually, I didn't think that at all. That was all brandy. Uh, <laughs> I, I got you. I was completely taking credit, brandy. I apologize. <laughs> um, but these aren't for sale. But we want you to know that we are ramping up for the season. Uh, I've been in this for... Well, it says it in my bio now, over 30 years, and I still get excited at this time of year. Um, so these aren't for sale. And another thing I want to mention, I'm really excited about, if you didn't know, uh, Brandy and I started a podcast. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, and we started it in February, uh, and it's uh, being a lot of fun. A lot of people are liking it. Uh, we're getting some really good feedback. Uh, it's available wherever you get your podcasts from, and it's available on our homepage, uh, goldenacre.ca. Okay, we have a uh, lot of ground to cover. <laughs> the puns are back. Um, I hope everybody's got their coffee, their tea, their breakfast, whatever it is. Oh, just Let's give me one second. Uh-oh, okay. I'm hearing that there is sound issues. Oh, no. Depending on how much you move. I don't know how much I move. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. I'm not even wearing a microphone. <laughs> Just give me one second. Let's try to move up closer to you. Let's get a little cozy. Yeah. yeah I, I could move my table, too. No, you have so much stuff on your table. That's a, I think I could move it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying all my stuff would stay where it is. Okay. I'll try and stay closer. Uh, again, anybody who's uh, been in our webinars know that I tend to get animated and I'll do charades of trees and leaves and uh, whatnot, but I will try and stay here and I will project my outdoor voice. Um, okay, so let's start off. Uh, and I've got my notes and uh, as always, my notes are just the PowerPoint. Uh, again, we, we, we can digress, so I need to stay on track. So uh, we are at that time of year where our garden is waking up. Um, and if, if you go out into nature, uh, city parks, um, whatever it might be, uh, we all are aware that nature is going to wake up without us. So, uh, you know, as, as that sunlight, yay, is coming back, it brings with it warmth. 
uh, that's melting uh, all the snow and the ice and the frost. And that's turning into moisture, uh, and the roots are starting uh, to wake up. But then the light is also hitting, uh, and it's creating photosynthesis. So we all know our basics, uh, the plants, everything starts from the roots. So as those roots are waking up, and they're starting to drink the water, and they're starting to get some of the nutrients, uh, they're sending it up to the leaves, and they're going, hey, we have moisture photosynthesized. The leaves are getting hit with the sun, and hey, presto, it's all. So the warmth uh, and the light and photosynthesis and the moisture, they're all combined. And those elements, those two elements, uh, are what are allowing the garden to wake up. And nutrients are being freed in the soil. The critters are moving. The I saw bugs yesterday. Did you? Oh, yeah, I was in my garden. So I uh, can't guarantee I couldn't see it, but I thought I heard a bee? I heard a buzz. <laughs> but I can't guarantee that it would be, because I couldn't see it, but I did go looking. Um, but there's lots happening. A lot of my perennials uh, in the front where I get full sun uh, have broken the soil. I've got bud break happening on some trees, but other areas, it's still shady, still frozen completely solid. So as the garden is, uh, is waking up, uh, and we're outside, and we're looking, and we want to help it wake up. Well, what are we looking for? And first of all, uh, what I always assess is winter damage. Um, has snow come off the roof and completely compacted soil? Might have killed some perennials. Uh, just completely compacted the roots. Ice build up. Uh, any branches broke. Are there patches in my lawn that is dead? So I'm looking uh, for the winter damage. But at the same time, I'm looking for the progress. Um, I'm looking for the bud break. Uh, I'm looking for my bulbs coming up. Uh, my mascari has already broken the surface. No flower buds yet, but the leaves are up and the leaves are green. Uh, are there patches on my lawn greening? Are weeds coming up? I'm overall looking at the progress. And I'm also looking at my soil. Uh, and right now, we go out, <clears throat> excuse me, and we look at our flower beds, veggie beds. A lot of times the soil is just kind of grayish. It's not looking wonderful. It's compact. There's no, none of that nice aggregate where it's all broken up. Um, but that's not really telling me what the quality is. I'm going to look down. I'm going to see if we've had a ton of moisture and a lot of the good stuff has leached out and there's a lot of clay there or it's all sticky and bound together. And we'll look to see what amendments I'm going to need to add. And we're going to, we're going to talk about them. We're going to look at the debris. Was I able to do a good fall cleanup? Or did life get busy in the autumn? Did the snow come unexpected? Um, uh, 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 you know, my mom, my mom had a house before she moved into her condo. Uh, and just the way the wind came down that street, I'd get her garden spotless uh, in the autumn. And every year in the spring, there were leaves, uh, garbage bags, chip bags, uh, everything just scattered throughout. Uh, and it was just the wind would whip down, she had a fence, and that's where it would all sit. So I want to look at the debris. How bad is it? Do I need to start getting that up, or is my queen to start with? And I'm going to have a look, see what birds are coming. Uh, are my songbirds coming? Uh, am I seeing birds? In those pounds of debris, uh, am I seeing ladybirds and centipedes and all of the good stuff that I want to see? Or am I already seeing some of the bugs I don't want, like aphids? So this is what I'm looking out for uh, when I go. And uh, when we talk about that, when we go out and we look at our garden uh, at this time of year, I know for a lot of people it can seem uh, overwhelming. Where do we start? Um, it seems like Everything needs us to take care of it, and everything does. Uh, you know, the I'm not a winter fan. Um, I I don't think Brandy's a winter fan either. No. Uh, we are spring, summer, and autumn people. Um, with that being said, we make the best of winter because, hey, we live in Canada. Uh, we know it's coming. And there's no point, you know, not making the best of it, but... Uh, winters can be very hard on us, hard on our gardens. 
and everything, our lawns, our veggies, uh, veggie plots, flower beds, raised planters, everything just needs a bit of TLC, needs to come up. So where do we start? Well, we start with that assessment. Okay, we go out and we look, and maybe, maybe that's going to tell us where our priority is. Uh, maybe a ton of snow came off your roof or your neighbor's roof, uh, and it's crushed some of your shrubs, uh, and you've got major damage happening uh, to your raspberries or your roses or, or maybe some of your trees. And you're like, oh, I, I have to start there. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe there's no glaring point where you're like, oh, look at all of that damage. Uh, so you, you can really start anywhere. So you're going to look for those areas that are south facing, west facing, that are drying out quicker. You don't want to be walking uh, in your flower beds or on your lawn when it's wet. You're going to squish it down. You're going to compact that compacted soil even more. If there's any roots, grass, it's all roots. But in your flower beds, in your perennial beds, you start pushing on those roots. Maybe the ground is still frozen here and you're going to crush the root, break the root. Uh, so you want to be real careful. So we're going to look for areas that are dry, dry earth, that are workable. Okay, that's what we're looking for. We're going to check our raised planters. Uh, maybe drainage holes have gotten clogged uh, and they're just a pool of slop and the ice is melted because it's raised and it's getting all the sun on it, but nothing is draining through and it's a mess and we need to clean that. Uh, we're going to look at our tools, and we're going to try and remember gardening, cleanups, everything like that. These are marathons, not sprints. Uh, I've done it as a sprint because I did it commercially. We had to get in uh, and get these gardens open and up, and we had to get them running, and we had to go on to the next. Now, that's different when you have a crew of people. And those same people are coming back next week and the week after and all through the season. And they are going to baby your garden and they're going to manicure it and they're going to be there for it. We don't always have that. Um, so aggressively waking up our garden can be a little bit much. So gently is the key. And I've said this before and I will touch on it again. Is I have never met a person in my life that likes being woken up jarring. Nobody likes being screamed at, eh, eh, going in their ear, uh, kids coming and peeling their eyes open. Uh, it's not a pleasant way to wake up. Uh, waking up naturally, uh, waking up to sunlight coming through the window, to the sound of birdsong, those are great ways to wake up. Your garden is the same. Um, you know, I, there's a ton of YouTube videos about people who startle their animals awake, okay? Uh, slightly cruel, but also slightly. Uh, I don't do that. I don't wake my dog up like that because I don't like being woken up like that. But even animals don't want to wake up like that. Uh, the hibernating bears don't want to wake up like that. Everything wants to be gentle. And that applies to your garden as well. So um, we're going to go back to where, where I started here. We're going to talk about the trees and the shrubs because a lot of times... Um, do a quick time check. All right, we're doing good. We got a lot of ground to cover, and I know sometimes we uh, run on, so I just want to make sure I'm on time. So a lot of times, um, our trees and shrubs, uh, they get damaged. Um, and what can happen is uh, early uh, season uh, snowfalls. Um, and this happens uh, not often, but frequently in uh, Calgary. Uh, where our trees, they're not fully frozen and they haven't dropped all of their leaves and we get a heavy, wet snowfall. Um, and that's the joy of being close to the mountains. Uh, and that snow comes, well, in the winter, if we get a snowstorm like that, the trees are frozen solid. All of that sap is in and the tree's like, yeah, it's got no leaves. Pick up one leaf, you're not going to feel the weight, okay? Pick up a bag of leaves, you go, oof, that's heavy. Pick up a full tree's worth of leaves. You're not doing it alone. You're going to need four or five guys on a tarp, and you've got to roll it. So when that's all those leaves are on a tree, and the snow sticks to them, the snow is hitting the branches. That weight can cause branches to break. It can cause tips to break off. Uh, shoveling. Sometimes we get so much snow 
we've run out of places to shovel it, and we're shoveling it onto our beds. And we've done this where I'm like, and I throw, and I hear a branch break, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a job for the spring, and I just shovel moss. Now. So we're going to see that down. Maybe our neighbors have been, uh, shoveled snow onto it. Uh, the winds, high winds, when something is frozen solid and rigid and the wind is hitting it, eventually it's going to break. So we have all of this breakage happening on our trees and shrubs. And right now, even though some of those buds are breaking and some aren't, they're still semi-dormant. They are starting to wake up, but they're not bursting out right now. So it's a good time to prune this. And when you want to prune, uh, only look, less is more at this time of year. Absolutely, we're going to prune for shape. And we're going to do a, uh, a, a webinar on that, about pruning trees, shrubs, selecting them and whatnot. But what we're talking about right now are existing trees and shrubs in your property that have very clear damage, dead, and diseased, um, or dangerous. Okay? And I included the, the desirable. So those are the five Ds. Um, we have dead, disease, damage, dangerous, desire. Um, and that's what we're looking for right now. We're not too worried about the desirable. That's more pruning uh, for shape. Um, but what we're looking at right now, is there any branch that's just completely snapped? It's hanging down. There's no connection whatsoever. We need to prune that. Um, is there a branch that's damaged? Is it heavily damaged where it's split all the way through, but it's still connected? It is still technically. I recommend pruning that up. And the reason for that is as that branch is broke, infection I can get in there. There's moisture that moisture can sit in and cause bacteria, losing the full branch, um, as opposed to just lopping it off, making a clean, proper cut. Very rarely. Uh, when we get winter damage uh, and breakage, like very rarely uh, does it do it properly on the collar, or does it make it a nice even cut for you? You nearly always have to go clear, and right now you always have to go. Uh, so that's what we're going to look for. And I, one I always touch on: this is no uh, exception. Dangerous, and dangerous can be as simple as. Maybe a branch is being pushed down, and now it's at eye. You walk past it, you're worried it's going to hit you, you know, one's down here, a kid in the eye or something. So you clean it up, no problem. But sometimes we'll get yeah, that has made a branch dangerous, and a big, big branch coming off your tree is now green ups, your power lines, your flower beds. You don't want to fall in your flower beds. Every year, there's horror stories for climbing a tree and doing it themselves. Please ask for advice. Please ask for help. It just isn't worth it. It really isn't. Um, you run the risk of seriously hurting, or God forbid, killing yourself. Uh, you run the risk of doing that and seriously hurting and killing the tree. And you run the risk of doing all of that and then dropping the branch on the power lines uh, or on your roof, or on your flower bed, uh, and just the whole thing becomes a mess. So if you see a branch that you consider dangerous, ask for help. Um, there's arborists out there. It's a city tree. The city will come out and assess it. Um, but please, please, please be careful. But for the rest of them, clean them up. Uh, and this is a great time of year. The ground can be frozen solid, but you can still go out and prune that tree. You're not trying to work the soil. Don't have to worry about acting anything because you're standing on ice. You're not pushing anything down. So it's a great time uh, to get out and look at those trees and shrubs. And like I said, uh, Nelly, always there is going to be some damage. I already went out. Uh, I assessed my uh, raspberry canes, uh, my cotoneasters. Um, oh, my gosh. I can't even think of what the other one is in, in, in the back of my yard now. The name is right there. Small yellow flower, they grow wild. Dandelion? That's a shrub. <laughs> oh. That's a good one, though. Sorry. Why did the name literally just escape me? I talk about them. It'll come back to me. Brody and Slave. I don't make oh, no sense. No, what? Mysterious. Don't tell it. Ah. 
Thank you, Grungy. Uh, all I could think of in my head, I saw the Mickey Light, and that's all I was in. I poke Tella. So a lot of shrubs are going to have a lot of damage. Um, and, and we're going to need to assess them and clean them up. I've already done mine. Now, here's the thing. I've been too busy. I haven't cleaned them up, but I know what I need to do. Okay, so I know it's going to take me a couple of hours. I'll get my compost bin. I'll bring it back. Sniff, sniff, sniff. And away we go. Okay, so now let's talk about our lawns. Uh, lawns are one of the first uh, areas of the garden I see people working on every year. Brandy and I were talking about it. So it's awesome to be doing the webinars again with you, Brandy. But it's not like Brandy and I don't see each other literally all winter. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> podcast, kinds of projects, uh, been having a lot of fun. Brandy and I were talking about this. Um, actually, our most recent podcast coming out tomorrow morning is on lawns. And Brandy and I were talking about it. Um, and one of the first areas in a garden that you see people working on are lots. You see people breaking down. I'm willing to pump money today when I take my uh, dog out uh, this afternoon. Um, I guarantee I'm going to see somebody working on the lawn. It's going to be 16 degrees. It was 16 degrees yesterday and 10 degrees the day before that. And that is fine if your lawn is dry. So you want to have a look and you don't want to work on your lawn when it's sopping wet. A little damp is fine, but if you if you step on your lawn and your foot goes down and water pools or you sink a little, probably still too wet, better the back lawn. The work you're doing, you run the risk of causing more damage than good. Your lawn already damaged from the winter. You don't want to make a situation worse. And then, so now let's say you've got your area. You've got your dry area. Uh, you can work on your grass. You know that. Um, where do you start? You're going to start with rake. And rake gently to begin. Uh, my first raking of my lawn is always... Uh, so the grass is all knocked down to the desert, it's raised. And it's all interlocked, and it's flat, and it's brown, and it's it's not pretty. There's branches on it, there's leaves on it, there's garbage on it. So I go out with my rake. All I do is just very gently, I didn't even grab a rake. Well, it's like grab it. I forgot to grab a rake. <laughs> but I think we all know what a rake looks like. And I just very gently, and I'm not de-thatching. I'm not getting rid of that thatch. I don't mind my for a couple more weeks. I'm not going to be fertilizing yet. I'm not going to be putting down seed yet. All I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the lawn. I'm going to allow some airflow. I'm going to allow more moisture to get in. I'm going to get the debris on. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And the reason I leave my thatch, and I know some people do key thatch, the reason I leave mine is I'm not out there all the time uh, manicuring and taking care of my lawn. I don't have the time. Uh, I leave the thatch because that thatch is going to insulate the roots if we get a hard frost, if we get more snow. So I always deep thatch on my second or even third rake. So all I'm going to do is lift the grass so it goes like this. It stands up, and now we've got airflow going through it. Moisture can get down to the roots easier. Uh, and uh, I was talking to Shelly. Uh, she's our guest on our podcast. Shelly is awesome. And we were saying that when uh, we break our horns, and you start here, you break, 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 break. And by the time I'm, oh, by the time I lose my balance, I'm not even ground. By the time I'm over here and I've done my wall, I look over, and this part is greening up. Not green like a picopa, which is my flower, give me a shout out. Um, but it's starting to green, and it's, it's already coming to life. You're lifting it up. So we want to do that. And... I do at least two rakings, normally three on my lawn. Again, depending on the season. I do one, and then it's glorious. It's no frost, and there's no snow. Next one, I'll de-thatch, I'll fertilize, I'll seed. No problem. But if I think it could still be a bit risky, I might go out and just give it another hard break, lift some of the thatch off for better moisture control, really get it invigorated. And then on my third one, that's when I'm really going wild, dethatching. I'm removing any dead grass. I'm looking at what I need to overseed, top dress, 
Um, I'm looking at all of the areas and, and what they need and what I can do. So any fertilizer, um, we get asked this all the time, okay? Any fertilizer, and I picked this one to start a fertilizer, works amazing in the spring. What is any, it? Oh, it's a Scott's Turf Builder starter. Thank you. Sorry. I'm like, I can see. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. See, we're still working on the kinks, even though we did 12 of them last year. We still need to figure it out. So this is a Scott starter. Any plant, any plant, trees, perennials, house plants, uh, you should only fertilize when it's actively growing. It's not actively growing. You run the risk, choking out roots, wasting time, wasting money. So once you grasp, and I'm not talking about slightly greening up, okay? Uh, that's just simply photosynthesis. I'm talking about where you rake your grass and the next day you're like, oh, it looks the same. Oh, it looks the same. And then one day you look and you go, it looks a little shaggy. I think I might need to cut it. We have active growth. That's when we want to start off fertilizing. So uh, when you see that active growth, it's not a bad idea to give it a sniff, clean it up, then put your fertilizer, your seed and everything down and really get it done. But that's what we're looking for. And only apply your seed. And I got this one. This is a low maintenance, uh, less water seed from Manderley. Uh, and I only see, I know some people do it early. Um, I do mine uh, when it's warmer, consistently warmer. Um, so it, uh, it, it, it starts germinating. It, seeds, we did a seed starting, uh, God, that seems like a long time. Yeah. It's like in February. Uh, seeds need warmth and moisture. So if it's still freezing at night, it's not really much point. You're on the risk of losing seed. Wait until it's consistently warm. If you're looking for some more lawn tips, uh, honestly, listen to our podcast tomorrow. Shelly is fantastic. She's a lawn care rep with Scott. Uh, and she gives us some tips, ones that I never even considered. Okay? And then only dethatch. Only give it that really hard break. When it's dry, if that ground is still moist, the roots might come out too easy and you might be ripping at the crown. Your rake might go into the soil a bit deeper than you like and you're ripping through roots. So you really want it to be nice and dry when you thresh it and you get all that thatcher. Okay? And that's where we start with all of this. Flower beds are much the same. Okay? We want to wait until they're thawed, dry, or dry. Uh, the earlier, the better. We don't want to be out there when all of our perennials are exploded and it's hard to get in and we're damaging our perennials and breaking leaves trying to get into the flower bed. We want to get that debris off, the garbage, the branches, the leaves. We want that sun and we want that moisture hitting the soil. We want to break the soil compaction. And that is something as simple as just taking your cultivator. I just dropped a little one. Okay. And then literally just... All we want to do is break that surface tension, that trust, for want of a better description, that forms. We want to start allowing gases to exchange and moistures to exchange. We want to assess our friends. Are there any that got gaps? Are there any? Uh, we need to do some work. Are we going to have a gap? Or we need to consider buying a new perennial. Spoiler alert, we always want to buy new perennials. Uh, um, we want to uh, examine the soil quality. We're going to talk about that next. Okay. We want to tidy the edges. Okay. Get an edge. Cut that new edge right now. Sharpen it up. Get it with some print. These are all things that we can be doing right now. That'll last us a good chunk of the season, depending how picky we are on our edges. Okay. So the most important thing with our veggie beds and our flower beds uh, are adding our amendments, our soil breaking us, okay? Um, and normally, uh, Brandy and I were talking about this a couple of days ago. And normally what we say is, uh, there's amendments, here's some amendments, pick the one that you think is best. We said we've never really talked about what they are. So we're gonna go a little deeper today. And I'm taking the time, I thought we had lots of time, uh, so, uh, but I'm not gonna rush. Um, so an amendment, it's not a fertilizer. An amendment is anything that we add, any ingredient, any mix that we put into the soil 
but it changes the chemical balance of the soil or the physical quality of the soil. That's it. It's uh, not necessarily a plant food. A lot of them will uh, nourish your plant, but it's not a plant food uh, like photosynthesis or fertilize. Okay? These are amendments. These are to make the soil healthy. And like I've always said, I don't have a pig, but if I had a pig between a healthy, regulated, amended soil or fertilizer, choosing my soil every time, it's not even close. Um, it's not even a competition. It's soil every time. Okay? And we're looking for a few things. We want to increase water retention. Maybe we want to help with drainage. Okay? Maybe we want to do a bit of both. Um, we want to aerate the soil. We want to proof it up. We also want to replenish. As our plants grow, they leach from the soil. So plants need nitrogen. They're pulling all the available nitrogen out of the soil. We want to put some nitrogen back in. We want to put in all of those nitro and nutrients back into our soil. And amendments are going to help us get them. So what to use? Okay, I'm going to start with one that I think every gardener knows. I think it's right in front of me here. Okay, and I grabbed this one. It's sea soil. We love sea soil. Uh, amazing product, amazing company, but it's a compost. Okay, it's an organic compost. Don't fall over. We're going to go around this way. I'm doing laps at the table. Um, compost is just decayed, broken down matter uh, that is reverted back to soil. We see it happening in the forests. Uh, go to uh, any big park and walk through the trees dig through that leaf litter and the pine needles and branches. Eventually, you get into a beautiful black earth, and that's all composting material. And we use it uh, to return that organic matter back to the soil. We keep our beds clean. Like I've just said, clean the debris off. We don't have time for it to break down. We don't want our beds to look messy. We don't want to encourage pests or disease. So we keep them clean. We let other people make compost, but we put that back in our beds. Fantastic stuff. Cocoa coir. I don't have any yet in front of me. It's coming in. Don't have it installed yet. Cocoa coir is uh, probably my favorite amendment. Uh, it's pH neutral. It's not going to change the soil. And it's just smashed coconut husks. Very fibrous. It's excellent. It aggregates the soil. It helps with water retention. Helps with nutrient retention. Um, it's and, and, and it lightens the soil. So a lot of times... Uh, when you're starting seeds and you buy a seed starting mix or those pellets, a lot of times those pellets are peat moss or coir. Um, and they're amazing in root development because they hold the moisture, but they're very fibrous and they're very, uh, can't think of the word right now, they allow a lot of airflow to pulse. Uh, and they, uh, so those roots are really able to expand. So it allows root development. Manure, I do have manure here. Manure is composted animal waste from uh, herbivorous animals. I uh, don't manure, human, uh, anything like that. It's always um, uh, cows, uh, horses, uh, anything like that. Those are the two big ones. Uh, sheep, there's another one. So those are the three. And uh, it is incredibly rich. And it helps um, put a ton of nutrients back into the soil. It helps hold the plant, helps with moisture. Um, manure is a fantastic addition. Uh, farmers have been putting it in for millennia. And it works. And manure is not stinky. It's not smelly. It's composted. It's not, uh, you know, just rotting raw animal waste. It's actually composted. And then it's broken back down to a very nutrient-dense uh, material. Peat moss. Uh, where's my peat moss? Here it is. Yeah, I grabbed a small bag because I didn't have the strength to lift a big bag. Okay, peat moss is very like coir. Uh, it's exactly what the name says. It's moss. It's dead and decaying mosses. It's very fibrous, slightly acidic. So it is going to change the pH of your soil, which isn't a bad thing. Um, it again does what coir does. It's going to aerate. It's going to allow root development. It's going to fluff that soil. Out. It's going to allow uh, water retention. Okay, worm castings. Where are my worm castings? These are my favorite. Uh, coconut coir, 
uh, warm castings. Uh, I absolutely love them. Uh, they are exactly that. It is big bins filled with worms that chomp their way through a ton of stuff, and they make this nominally rich soil. Uh, literally supercharged. It is. Uh, I use it in my house. I use it in absolutely. There is nothing I plant now that I don't add worm castings to. Um, they're just they're just so rich, uh, and there's no chance you're going to damage your plants. You can plant directly in worm castings. Very expensive and completely not necessary. That's why most people don't do it. It works great as an amendment, but you're not going to hurt if you do it. Um, I actually have done it because somebody told me, and me being me, I was like, well, I'm going to try that. My plant did amazing. It's an expensive way to plant. Using it uh, as an addition um, is way better. What else is got? Volcanic uh, rock mint. Okay. This stuff is amazing. I use this. And this, so a lot of them, I'm going to quickly say this, can be interchangeable. If you're using coir, you probably don't need to use peat moss. If you're using peat moss, you don't need coir. If you're using compost, you probably don't need manure. In manure, you don't need compost. But some of them, very standard. Okay, and volcanic mineral is very standard. Um, and I strongly recommend it. I got turned on to this, never used it. And somebody turned me on to it about, I want to say six years ago, maybe seven years ago. I've never looked. That was always kind of like, I've never used it. My garden does fine. I started using it. My garden does amazing. What we don't see is a lot of times um, plants are pulling out micronutrients. So we all know the macro MPK, but they're pulling out micronutrients and they're pulling all the minerals out. Your plant will grow fine without this. Like I said, I did it for many years. But you add this, you're going to get, uh, you're going to see an improvement. I'm not going to say you're going to get because there are always other factors. But I immediately saw an improvement in the size of my flowers, how many flowers, size of my tomatoes, and the taste of my tomatoes. Um, and, you know, maybe it was psychosomatic. Maybe I believed in it and I, and I felt that. But I've been gardening for a long time. I've been given a lot of snake oil and I'm, I torture test things. I really do. Uh, and this one, uh, I'm sold on it. And it's a great addition. You can put it in pots. You can put it in raised planters. You can put it in house plants. Uh, it's a fantastic addition. And it's literally just crushed volcanic rock. Say one was. And it's organic? Uh, yes. Nice. Yes, this one, I believe, is uh, Omri. Yep, Omri listed. Nice. Yep. Thanks. So that's 100% organic. Okay. So this... Worm castings and sea salt compost, three completely organic materials you can put in your garden. We have perlite. Uh, a lot of people love perlite. I don't particularly use it. I haven't had a need. I do use it with house plants. Uh, I don't use it in my garden. Some people love it in their garden. And again, it's volcanic um, and it's going to help root development. It's going to help aeration. It's going to help drainage. It's very moisture based. Um, I don't really have a need for it. It does come in hand with pots, raised planters, massively beneficial. Um, but in my garden beds, never seen a need for it, haven't used it. Uh, but everywhere else, I have. Vermiculite. There's another one. And vermiculite is a naturally occurring mineral. And all it's going to do, it's going to aerate the soil, but it also holds nutrients in. So it's going to hold uh, your fertilizers. So that's not just leaching away. And then, uh, and then when the roots get to it, they can pull it out. It comes readily available. And we have biochar, which we have in store, and I forgot to grab that. Uh, I went through my list, and I missed that. It was a bit of a hectic morning uh, getting set up for this. Uh, plus, there was a football game on, <laughs> uh, plus my kid is starting his first day of work. There was a lot going on, and I missed that one. Uh, biochar is amazing. Uh, another one uh, that I got sold on way more recently, maybe two or three years ago. Now I add it, uh, and it's fantastic. It helps neutralize soil. I think we all know uh, upset tummy or dogs have got an upset tummy. They say feed charcoal. I uh, can help absorb uh, chemicals, blah, blah, blah. I've never actually done it. These are things that I've heard. Again, anything medical, always talk to a doctor or pharmacist. 
Do not rely on me. I'll talk about your gardens, not your health. Um, but charcoal creates very positive habitats for beneficial bacteria and nematodes. And they live there and they help the plant absorb the nutrients. They can absorb nutrients. They can pull carbon out of the air and it becomes an essential part of your growing. So that's kind of the who's who in the zoo for amendments. Um, how do we amend? So very, very similar. If you look at this one, and I'm not going to spend too long on this one, because a lot of them are the same between your flower beds and your raised plantains. So the one thing I recommend is amend your soil every year. Okay, like I said, if I had to pick between amending and fertilizing, it's amending. I amend my soil every year, depending on the season. I sometimes amend it twice a year. Uh, I hit it again in um, August. Plants have rapidly grown. They're producing fruits and veggies, massive flowers. They are depleting the soil at an incredible rate. I'll do a top dress with some compost, with some worm castings. Just get some more nutrients in there and let the plants get the benefit. The biggest difference here, you want to remove debris. You want to uh, break that soil up. The difference is raised planter to flower bed. Be careful of what you use. I see people in raised planters add uh, uh, sea salts, manures, uh, compost, topsoils. They are frequently too heavy to go in raised planters. Uh, raised planters don't have that natural drainage that a, a flower bed, veggie bed does. Uh, and they've got you know a couple of drain holes at the bottom. But what can happen is that heavy, heavy soil can block. Now it's holding moisture. Moisture can't escape, and you can end up flooding your pots. So absolutely amend the soils there, but stick with your lighter ones. If you really want to add compost, less is more. Uh, don't add it at the same rate you add it to a veggie plot. Uh, a light top dressing and work it in. Uh, do not want to go ridiculously heavy with it. You want to go heavier with your lighter amendments, your coir, your peat moss. Your worm castings, that's a good uh, organic material you can put in that isn't heavy, but is going to help. And those are the biggest differences uh, on amending. I want to talk about debris. We've talked about cleaning it out of our raised planters, our flower beds, our flower lawn, our veggie beds. I'm, I used to be guilty of this. I've gotten better. When I go out and I clean up my garden, I want my garden to be me. Okay. When I sweep my floors, okay, I've got a dog, kid, busy, we like going out, my floors get dirty. I sweep the floor, I don't leave it in a pile, wait, I sweep it up, vacuum it, dust bust it, whatever. But a garden is different. A lot of the beneficial insects we need, uh, centipedes, um, the, the black beetles, the sand beetles, uh, ladybirds, spiders, they overwinter. And they need those tiles to hide in, it protects them from frost, protects them from snow. Uh, it gives them a home. We go out, we clean it all up, and we go, oh, I want my garden to be spotless. I get it. I absolutely get it. And we dump it all in the compost. We are getting rid of a ton of beneficial insects. The bad ones are still there. I promise you, the bad ones are still hiding. Uh, they can live in more adverse conditions, much like weeds can, compared to the plants we want to grow. So leave some pot, get them off to the side, move them along the fence or at the back of the bed. Wait until it's consistently warm and those bugs are coming out and they're hungry and they want to eat the bad bugs that are there. Then start getting rid of your pile. And I know it's tough. I get it. I get that it's tough. I hate seeing my garden messy, especially when I've been in it all day. But since I've been leaving our winter piles, uh, the benefits absolutely incredible. It can literally uh, make or break the garden. A couple of notes on fertilizing. I don't fertilize this time of year. Again, fertilize with active growth. Not when things are cleaning up, not when there's a little bit of bud break. Active growth. When you're going out, granules are like every day adding an inch, inch and a half. That's active growth. That's when you want to start fertilizing. And Slow release fertilizers can be used at this time of year, your granulars, your shaken feeds, uh, that kind of thing. 
You can absolutely put them in. They're going to be a slow breakdown. Uh, again, I still don't, but you absolutely can if you feel that you want to get a jump start on it. Less is more. Uh, a lot of fertilizer at this time of year were not out of snow risk. There can still be snow. Uh, they can still freeze solid. You can get a week of minus 20. I know I don't even want to say those words, but I have to. Touch wood that we don't. Um, and we run the risk of choking stuff up. I don't fertilize. I amend it this time of year. Normally start my fertilizing on my big planting day, uh, the May long weekend. Might be sooner, weather permitting, might be a bit later. That's when I kick off my fertilizer program. If you feel the need to fertilize, I recommend your slow releases and put them out. This time of year, look for a general fertilizer, your 2020-20, uh, or a transplant fertilizer. It's going to have a higher middle number. You'll see uh, like a 10 20 10, uh, something like that. And that's really going to help those roots grow. Those are the fertilizers you're looking at for this time of year. Do a tool and accessory check inventory. It's happened to me. I'm pretty careful with my tools. I put stuff away. I hang them all up in the garage. Every once in a while, something falls down or I drop something. I have a job to do. I don't put it back properly. Uh, and now it's sitting in water and it's got rust on. I need to clean that up. Maybe, maybe a handle broke. I used it. It was great. I put it away. The dry winter air just put a huge slit in my handle. I go to use it and it breaks off. I got splinters and I have a useless tool. Neither of those are great. Got to come to the garden center. I got to buy another one. It's slowing me down. So a quick check. If you've got time, okay, if you're not buying new pruners, you've got your pruners from last year, clean them, sharpen them, sterilize them. That could be something if you are cutting in the fall. Maybe there's a powdery melt you want. Maybe there is something you don't want on that. Sterilize it. Stick it in hydrogen peroxide. Bleach. Rubbing on them. Okay, get your pruners cleaned up, get them sharpened, check your pots. Uh, I have done this more times than I care to admit. Brought all my pots out to go planting. I've done it, I've counted them. I'm like, oh yeah, I've got nine. That's what I'm doing. I know where they're going. Two of them are broke. They've got huge cracks in them. They're not holding the soil, they're not holding the water. I need to go get more pots. Quick assessment look at them, wash them. If you are carrying a powdery mildew uh, from last year, spider mites, sterilized. Wipe them down with hydrogen peroxide. Get them cleaned up. This is one. I'm not going to do it this year. I've already decided. I am checking my hoses. I am checking my sprinklers. I am checking my hose guns before I start my season. Because every year I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. I turn it on. It's water spraying everywhere. The gun doesn't work properly. Half my sprinklers clogged. It can be a nightmare. I am taking fall before I need them. That's on me. Speaking of watering, um, if you don't have a rain barrel and you want one, uh, we carry them. Uh, we partnered with Green Calvary, um, and it's a uh, program put in place by the city of Calvary with Green Calvary. It's a nonprofit organization to help uh, save water, save us some money. Rainwater is way better for your plants than anything that comes out of the hose. Um, like I said, they're nonprofit. We make zero money off of We are happy to do it. It's environmentally, ecologically sound. They're repurposed barrels. So even the barrels aren't new. The barrels are taken. They're sterilized. I believe they sterilized them three times. They're drilled properly. They have all of the parts. Now is when you want to put your rain barrels. You want it to fill up with the spring rains we're going to get. I see a lot of people grabbing their rain barrels after the rainy season. It's not a bad thing. It's better than nothing. Now is the time you want to get it up. Uh, I absolutely, absolutely recommend getting rain barrels. And we're going to wrap it up. Went a little bit over. We nearly always do. Uh, but remember, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Very unlikely you're going to be one and done. Uh, if you sit and wait till you can work on all the garden at one point, the area that's dry uh, and warm and facing south, everything has grown, and you're going to do more damage by the time you get into it if you can work on the back. So take that small burst of success, get that done, cross it off your list, and wait until the back is done. Keep an eye on the weather, especially frosts. Uh, we got our plants out there. Uh, there's a frost warning. Better to have a frost blanket now than have running and coming and getting one. 
tackle what you can when you can. Okay, not everybody can do a full day in the garden. It can be exhausting. Uh, not everybody can rake an entire lawn in one shot. They might only be able to do half of it. That's fine. That's fine. It's small batches of success. We don't want it to become a chore. We don't want it. When you spend the day in the garden, you spend Saturday in the garden, and you love it, and Sunday you can't even go out to a wall because you hurt so bad. Okay? Build on it. Yeah, you, we haven't gardened in six months. Our muscles aren't used to it. Okay? We're going to get calluses. We're going to get blisters. So let's take our time and do it nicely. No one likes to be woken up in a jar and bed. Okay? And I see people that walk out there. The grass is lying flat. It's down. And they are threshing it and ripping it out. And you're seeing chunks of good grass come out. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Gentle. Lift it. Let it breathe. Let it get used to it. Then next weekend, go out and rake it a little harder. Gently, slowly, do what you can when you can and ask for help. That's why we're here. We have blog posts. We have webinars. We have podcasts. We have experts here. I am not the only expert. I'm just the only guy who talks to the camera. I stand on the shoulders of giants, okay? The people who work in this department know more about these plants than I do. They work with them every day, all day, for the entire season, okay? The, the staff in tree lot, staff in perennials, garden supplies. They, they work with pots, amendments, fertilizers, soils, propagation. Ask people, ask for help. Shoot us a message. Brandy fields all the questions. She'll get it to the right department if her and I can't answer it. But we have everything you need. You're never alone. There's no such thing as a silly question. We had a great question on our podcast a while ago. And somebody said, I'm a, I, not verbatim, but somebody said something like, I am a rank amateur, a rank beginner. I don't know, even know where to start. Can you help me? Great question. We all have to start there. There's no shame in that. There's no embarrassment. We want to help you. We want to get you there. Uh, we want to have a great gardening season. And this is what's kicking it off. So uh, thank you, everybody. Again, I hope you enjoyed the backdrop. I hope you enjoyed everything. And uh, what are I? Five minutes over. <laughs> Two chefs. <laughs>